Hello, it is hot as Satan's coochie outside. Y'all see my tan? I'm coming in all toasty and it's kind of even this time, which is wild. You see that? It's only a slight. I am br I am good. Oh, hello everyone. It's Kendo here. <laughs> if you're new around here, welcome. If you're not new around here, what is up home skillet biscuit? Happy Saturday. If you don't know what Saturday is, Saturday is when I do a little something on my channel called Bad movies in a beat. The series on my channel where I talk about bad movies while putting my makeup on. But of course, before we do that, we have to send it over to Ad Roll Kenny. Gas around me that you want to know what the cheapest gas around me is without having a membership to Costco is five dollars and twenty five cents. So at least this time it's not me spending it on squishmallows. Somebody sent me a TikTok of like two squishmallows talking to each other and one is like I'm so excited to be sent to like a small child to to enjoy it's like I'm sorry to break it to you hon you're gonna be purchased by a 28 year old mentally ill girl <laughs> with bad money habits <laughs> first of all I'm 27 second watch these ads Hello everyone, it's Admiral Kenny to let you know that today's video is sponsored by HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit delivery service that allows you to have delicious, healthy, and easy to prepare meals sent straight to your doorstep. We love HelloFresh in this household cause it made me a better cook overall. And also why I hate going to the grocery store cause that it, it sucks. <laughs> HelloFresh allows you to have pre-portioned, pre-organized, pre-shopped for, quality ingredients sent straight to the comfort of your home so that you don't have to shop for it, you don't have to meal prep, you don't have to think about it. All you gotta do is chop the stuff up and then 20, 30 minutes later, it's all done, baby, and it tastes good. It tastes so good. My food from HelloFresh always tastes banger. And then my food that I make because I'm a better cook now because of HelloFresh, also tastes banger, okay? It's the gift that keeps on giving, all right? I always know that something delicious is gonna come out of HelloFresh and I know that I also won't be wasting ingredients because again, everything's pre-portioned, everything's thought out. So when you're done using whatever ingredient, you throw it in the paper bag that it came in and throw it out. It's wonderful. They also have like cool random things you can get as like sides. I, I once bought like an oat latte. Who, who knew HelloFresh had oat lattes? Not to mention desserts and side dishes. It's always a fun time. Soups, pre-made things even, if you wanna just add that on to your, to your roster, if you will. So if you would like to check out HelloFresh, feel free to go to hellofresh.com and use code Kenny16 for up to 16 free meals, plus three surprise gifts. Big thanks again to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get on to the debauchery, baby. Last week, uh, we looked at, what did we look at? GBF, bad decisions. It's like uh, Mean Girls, but gay. And uh, it's not a very good movie. <laughs> There's a lot to be said about GBF and like the things that it was really pioneering, but also things that was not good. It was not a good idea entirely. If you wanna check out that movie, by the way, or check out that video, you can check that out up above or in the Bad Movies in a Beat playlist. And this week, <laughs> oh boy, where do we start? So this week, uh, we're talking about a movie that I found out about last minute last week, like right after I decided I was gonna do GBF. Uh, today we're talking about a movie that was a really, really, really bad idea in, in a way that's very Im almost impressive. Like it was bad in every way in regards to casting, concept, execution, just, just bad, just, just really bad. One of the most befuddling films I've seen recently. Today, we are talking about The Fanatic, 2019. About a man who is a crazed fan and takes his obsession for a movie star a little too far. So this movie was brought to my attention by uh, one of my followers over on Twitter. For those of you ever wondering, it's probably the most effective way to send uh, submissions to me, requests, I should say, to me, because you can send me like a photo of the movie and that's how I got caught up in this bullshit. Uh, someone said, hey, you really need to watch The Fanatic and then showed me like the movie cover and it had this tagline that I just couldn't ignore. All he wanted was an autograph. And it's like dark and ominous and it's obviously John Travolta. Like how am I supposed to not with this prime material? Also, 
Going back to, for those of you that have been following this series for a while, you know that I have a soft spot, a love-hate relationship, if you will, with, uh, you know, stalker movies. It hasn't been that long since I've done, like, one of these, but this isn't, like, a romantic sense. It's just, like, a fanatical fan. Usually there's, like, a sexual connotation, you know, fatal attraction. The last one I did before this, I think, was Obsessed with Beyonce. That is one of my favorite videos I've made, but of course, as usual, whenever I make a video that I really like, it ends up getting demonetized. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. I really found the background singing joke really funny, but okay, fine. Anyway, I have a love-hate relationship with stalker movies because they are very entertaining in a very formulaic way usually. This one, not as much. I was kind of surprised by some of the choices, but they tend to be, um, uh, not the best when it comes to like depictions of mental health in particular. Like, tend to not be very good at that at all. And this movie uh, is even worse <laughs> than some of the others I've seen in that particular regard. This movie is like downright offensive and it's uncomfortable and at points very disturbing. Like this movie was bad enough that I considered dropping it. I was like, we don't even need a video this week. <laughs> Again, this might be me being petty, obviously, okay? We're not perfect, I'm not perfect. Sometimes I'm very well aware of my imperfections and one of them is that when I watch a particularly bad movie, I can't just keep that within. I have to make a video about it. Otherwise, what am I supposed to do? I'm just supposed to hold on to that? That's how you go insane. So now, because I've done that to myself, I am here to subject you to that. So if it's something that you don't wanna be a part of, Fine. Wimp. I'm just joking. It's fine. This movie sucks. Like, it's fine. <laughs> As per usual in this series, this is something I'm going to subject you to. Again, I can't just hold on to this. <laughs> like, so without further ado, this is The Fanatic 2019. So the movie opens with a woman doing a voiceover, kind of giving us the introduction to the narrative. Um, it takes place in Los Angeles, Hollywood, to be more specific. The narrator we find out a bit later is a friend of our main character, and her name is Leah, and she kind of talks about the events of the story. And she basically does this whole setup that you know los angeles is the the city of people with broken spirits and fakers and, and and people that lie to make it but then they go over and show our main character his name is moose is that a real name i ended up being confused by this name and then i asked people apparently people name their children moose is it short for something is it a nickname that just feels cruel. Like, why would you? In contrast, there's people like Moose who are just like unbreakable seemingly. And you know, this makes Moose sound like a sort of alluring, kind of a uh, fable-like person. Resilient, kind, which as we proceed into the actual events of this movie, I don't, I don't entirely know what you're getting at. And this is, this movie is, rough it was a lot of choices were made moose again is played by john travolta and john travolta uh doesn't really disappear in this role it's just like we're very aware that it's john travolta but more so than that the character of moose <sighs> moose is a quiet meek socially awkward and presumably developmentally stunted man. Think like a Chris Chan. Okay, so throughout my video, I've been very careful to not use the word autism, even though that's what I suspected that Moose is supposed to depict. But no one verbally says anything in regards to him having autism, so I just didn't feel like that was appropriate. But on the Wikipedia, they say it explicitly, so I'm gonna go off of that. This movie is so freaking offensive and scary because it's like, basically demonizing people with autism because there's not a whole lot of great representation of people with autism on film. So the one that I see with someone with autism on it is spoiler breaking into people's houses and doing a lot of messed up shit. I don't know. I just feel like it's a really bad idea and it's really freaking offensive. That particular part is a choice. I really don't know how to feel about well I, I will tell you how i feel i hate it i what i'm struggling with internally is like 
what about this makes me hate it so much? And what I've kind of landed on, this isn't a full thought, mind you, is that one, it's ableist as f but beyond that, it's like, I get the feeling that this movie is aware of how much of an issue that is because he is going to be essentially a stalker in this movie. So what they do is use the illness as like a mitigating factor so that he's not an absolute bad. It turns him into like a sympathetic figure. Theoretically, someone we're supposed to cheer on versus the person he ends up stalking who is aggressive <laughs> because you're stalking them. <laughs> First, there's, and I'm getting ahead of myself, there's elements that show that the object of his obsession, the actor, is actually a good guy in ways. And so it turns into this movie kind of saying that there's no good or bad person, there's no absolute evil, it's just two people who say things very differently and are acting off of their own fears, which is a very profound thought. However, the ending of this movie completely undermines that and makes it so that we're supposed to think that the object of his obsession is a bad guy because he didn't want to be stalked. <laughs> And so instead it kind of, in a weird way, is meant to make the audience feel compassionate about the stalking because Moose is presumably not developmentally where he should be for his age. I don't know about you, <laughs> but if I was getting stalked, I don't give a fuck what you're going through, bitch. Like what the fuck does that have to do with me? You still stalking somebody, what? Yeah, and this movie kind of makes it sound like the guy that was getting stalked was going too far. You can tell this movie got me hot because I'm popping in here all through editing because I'm just mad because I have never met an autistic person who has ever done some shit like this. So it feels like they're using autism as a justification for his behavior as if autistic people do this shit. And it's making me hot. Like, no, autism didn't make you break into his house. And autism will not keep you from getting rocked if you break into somebody's house. I don't know if we need a bunch of like super sympathetic stalker stories. I think bad decisions were made all around in both depiction of mental health and also like being oddly pro stalker. <laughs> so as I've kind of touched on at length, Moose is a fan. He is a big fan of a movie star by the name of Hunter Dunbar. So Moose ends up finding out that Hunter is doing a book signing at a local bookshop near him. Also that he's having a casting party for his new movie in the area as well. And he has figured out how to sneak into the party as well as now go to this book signing as well. So he's super excited. He's gonna see his idol in person. He's maybe gonna be able to tell him how much his work has meant to him, how much of a fan he is, how he's seen all his movies. He's super excited. And in preparation for meeting Hunter Dunbar in person, Moose spends a bunch of money that he does not have for like a collectible jacket from Hunter's, one of Hunter's films. And he's super excited because he'll finally get Hunter to sign it. So that night, Moose and his friend Leah end up sneaking him into the party. Uh, Leah is a photographer and she seems to be like working the show. She's also a paparazzi, which ends up coming up a bit later. You know, Moose is super excited. He's gonna sneak in and finally be able to talk to Hunter Dunbar, his idol. And it's odd because like Moose, sticks out like a sore thumb. This is like a casting party. Obviously they'd have a list or something and no one notices this like tall dude in like a comic book shirt in the middle of the like cocktail party, but okay. Um, he's looking around for Hunter and he doesn't seem to find him, but instead he ends up finding like another celebrity in, in town and he goes up to her uh, and he, you know, kind of awkwardly t talks to her about how much he loves her in whatever movie she does. Moose is just like a big movie fan in general. Like he's, he's collects autographs. That's what he does. Asks her if Hunter is in the room in the party. Uh, and by the way, she's gorgeous. I don't, like her skin glowing, good for her. Drink a lot of water, good, good on you. She basically tells him like, oh no, he couldn't make it to the party. He had to take his son to something for school, like a like a recital or something. Um, and Moose takes this terribly enough that it kind of alarms the actress and security comes in and tosses him out. He also bought an outside bag, which can be really scary in situations like that. So they end up kicking him out, but Moose doesn't take it well. He gets a bit belligerent and that's like scary if this random guy breaks into a party. Later that night, Leah comes to Moose's house and chastises him for acting up at her job, essentially. She's like, yo, you were causing a scene that's like not good for me. I could have got in trouble. By the way, their relationship is very like, like 
I guess, um, almost paternal. Like she looks after him in a way that's, you know, nice or whatever, but it's kind of like, how did y'all even meet? Cause he, she's also like 30 years younger than him. So it's like, how did y'all even become friends? Like anyway, we never find that out by the way. So a bit more about Moose. His main career is being a street performer. He actually plays theoretically as a British officer of sorts, street performer, but it's something like more like Australian, like a little British, a little Australian, Australian. Like you can't quite choose. Sometimes I do that too. For some reason, this job has rivals, you know? He ends up having like a rival street performer. He's a magician, bully him and try to steal money from him. The bully's name is Todd. That's all I really remember. And the only reason I remember that is like there's a part of the movie where Moose is talking to like a guy on the street and he's like talking shit about Todd and he's like, Todd, he's full of doo-doo. I like that Todd guy. He's not a god, he's full of doo-doo. <laughs> Sorry. I was starting to think about, me and my friend had a conversation and to this day, whenever I think of that conversation, I start crying and it's so not funny, but it makes me laugh anyway, so I'm gonna talk about it. I asked her like, what is <laughs> the funniest word for shit. And I've always thought boo-boo particularly because there's something so childish. So whenever I hear somebody say doo-doo or boo-boo, I just lose my mind. Like, I am 27 in reference to like a grown man in particular is who I think of when I say this, said that he boo-booed on himself. Like it leaves me weak. I am crying. <laughs> Oh my God, what was I even talking about? Oh yeah, Todd, he's like, he's like his bully at, on the street. Um, He also pickpockets uh, people on the, on the street and that's how he makes his money. Sorry, my eyes are watering. <laughs> anyway, now, but we see that Moose is like in relation to these guys, a relative good, you know, he's like, I don't do that. I don't pit pocket people. Todd doesn't respect the fans. He's full of doo-doo. <laughs> so anyway, it's time for that book signing that he's super excited about. He's finally able to go. And there he is in broad daylight in the flesh. There is Hunter Dunbar and he's signing his new book. Moose is super excited because he's finally meeting his idol, idolizing what it'll be like when he's finally able to meet him in person, like up front and he signs his stuff. Kind of imagines him like sitting there far away, calling him home, beckoning to him. He's obviously having a moment. Once he finally is able to get up to the front and talk to Hunter, Hunter ends up getting a message that a woman, his ex-wife or ex-girlfriend or ex, whatever, is out back wanting to speak with him and it's something that's important. So he cuts the uh, signing short right when Moose is up front and Moose doesn't get anything signed to go in the back and talk to his ex. Now she's really upset because apparently Hunter was supposed to look after their kid while she goes on a date. And Hunter, he's like, I'm sorry, I really am. Like, I this seems to be really important to you. I'm really sorry that I put you in this position. And while he's having this conversation, here comes Moose ass like, hey, hey, can you sign my shit? And it's like, bro, they're in a dark alley with nobody but this random dude listening in on your personal ass conversation. And the sheer fact that he didn't get decked right there is a miracle. That shows that Hunter apparently is a better person than I would be. Eventually he's like, yo, can you back up? Like I'm having a private conversation right now. Uh, his, his ex leaves and then here comes Moose. He's like three inches away from him. Like, hey, can you sign my thing? And he's like, I'm I'm officially done signing things. I'm done for the day. And he's like, please, please sign my stuff. And he's like, yo, no. Look, I'm on your side. I think she was bad. I think she was the wrong one. And he was like, if you don't back the f up, I'ma hurt you. I'ma punch you in the face. So after that less than ideal meeting with his idol, Moose goes to Leah and he's like, so how do I find his house? And this dumb bitch actually tells him. She's like, well, as a photographer, you know, I have this app that kind of shows us where the star's houses are. And sometimes the information's a little wonky, but even if I don't find the person I'm looking for, I can find somebody usually, so I still get paid. Tells Moose about this as if he's not a crazed fan. And he's like, this is perfect. Now I can go over Hunter Dunbar's house and I can give him a letter to apologize to him, but also berate him and make him feel bad 
because the only reason he's famous is because of fans like Moose. So he writes that letter and he goes over to Hunter Dunbar's house and waits outside of his gate. Hunter sees him as he's jogging with his son who's on his bike. He sends the kid inside and he says, get the fuck off my property or I'ma fuck you up. Again, very reasonable. Now this I think would have been a very reasonable time to call the police and say, Yo, this is two times I've seen this person. He is now at my private house. He's at my private residence. But at no point during this movie does Hunter ever call any authorities. They never explain why that is either. They just, he just never does it. And like several days pass, enough for him to be like, ah, I gotta take some action. He just doesn't do it. Cause we wouldn't have a story, I guess. I don't know. But yes, here's Moose again, asking for an autograph. So Hunter, aggressively basically like stabs him with a Sharpie and signs his ugly shirt. And I kind of feel like, well, you got your autograph. You came here to harass this man. You made out better than you should have, but does that stop the movie? No. Before he does that, he ends up getting bullied by Todd and his dudes again. Um, and they steal his money in the bathroom. But this like magical n ends up seeing it. I think he's the janitor or something of that area. But Flying Negro comes in and tells him, you need to stand up for yourself, Moose. And so, <laughs> sorry. And so here comes Moose realizing, you know, I need to take things into my own hands. <sighs> Moose takes this as, let me go back to that house. <laughs> this time sneaking onto his property, into his garden. And he ends up being spotted by the housekeeper who kind of shoos him out of the garden. And it really shakes her up. It really scares her. So much so that she ends up telling Hunter about it. He doesn't seem to be putting two and two together because who's the mother that keeps coming to your house? Who's the, who's the person that came to your house the other day? He's like, oh, it's fine. It's just whatever. Anyway, she gets really shaken up about it. And for some reason kisses her, gross. Um, I was very confused. It's, but then we find out that they have like a past relationship um, one that they have stopped and she's no longer interested in doing it. So she's like, no, we shouldn't. And he's like, okay, I'm sorry. I crossed the line. I'm really sorry that I've, that I, that I crossed the line there, which I guess is a nice ish way to handle that. You still shouldn't have been sleeping with a worker though, but whatever. Meanwhile, Moose talks to Leah about his interactions with Hunter and she freaks out because she didn't expect him to go to his house for some reason. Um, she ends up calling him a stalker for being a stalker. And he's like, why would you say that? I am not a stalker, I'm a fan. Which ends up being like a reoccurring like tagline throughout the movie. Like, I am not a stalker, I am a fan. At this point, Moose has now been kind of rejected by his friend, in his mind at least, he's been rejected by her, bullied by the guys on the street. And so when one of them, Todd, comes up to him to bully him again, he finally snaps and quote unquote stands up for himself. That scene made me laugh. Both uncomfortably, but also just in general. It kind of just made me laugh. I wish Freddy Krueger would come and chop off your head. I don't know if that's what I was supposed to do for that scene. I don't know if I was supposed to laugh, but I did. Sorry, uh, if I wasn't supposed to, my bad. In comes the flying magical Negro to tell him that he's proud of Moose for standing up for himself. Um, and we never see this name again. <laughs> but Moose is basically like, starts crying and having like a breakdown of how he's tired of people picking on him. Hunter talks to his gardener to ask whether or not he had seen any strange men in the garden because the maid had said that she had seen one. Um, he's like, no, I haven't seen anybody. I've just been working, like I haven't seen anybody. Um, but basically, hey, can I go home early? Cause it's starting to rain. And Hunter is like, sure, yeah, you can take the day off. Hunter and his son go running and the gardener is no longer in the house. So the only person there now is the maid. And guess who comes back to the house? Moose is like hiding in the bushes and the maid ends up finding the letter that Moose had written for Hunter. Apparently he had dropped it perhaps the last time he was in the garden. And so Moose freaks out at the prospect of her reading it instead of Hunter. And she gets scared reasonably cause it's a strange man in the garden. And she's like, someone help, someone help. Oh my God, who is this random man in the garden? And Moose ends up accidentally hitting her in the face, in the nose, knocking her backwards. And she falls into a nearby fountain, cracks her head and dies. <laughs> it's not funny. Um, and she's just there and he just leaves her there in the garden. He's just like, oh, that's crazy. Realizing that now nothing is stopping him from going inside the house, Moose 
moseys his way on in. And he's elated. He disgustingly eats the food in the refrigerator, uses his toothbrush, goes snooping through his medications. Apparently he takes stuff for insomnia, Hunter does. Um, He looks through home videos with him and his ex. You know, just real weirdo shit. And soon Hunter and his son return. Again, not at all aware that Moose is in the house. Uh, that just that's just a funny sentence moose is in the house (laughs) and moose is like hiding under the kid's dresser and stealing his toys um watching the kid use the toothbrush that presumably moose used because of hunter's insomnia he takes medication and he passes out on a chair and this is when moose is like oh my god i can live out my fantasy i'm gonna take pictures of me and hunter dunbar in his home He takes a picture of him kissing him on the forehead or on the cheek or something, which he posts to social media, by the way. And he isn't immediately like arrested because I I presume nobody followed him, so no one saw the photos, but he doesn't go to jail immediately. He's like, oh my God, look, I have this picture with Hunter Dunbar. And he ultimately ends up falling asleep in the chair right next to Hunter while watching a movie from his childhood. Now they give us a small, this is the only glimpse we'll get into Moose's upbringing. He falls asleep watching a movie and apparently when he was a child, he was neglected by his mom and he spent his entire childhood watching movies and that kind of insinuates that's the reason why he's such a big fan of film. It was like a form of escapism for him as a child and he was essentially raised by movies and hence he's a big fan if that's the word choice you wanna use for this behavior. (laughs) The next morning, Moose is able to escape before Hunter wakes up from his alarm. But Hunter ends up seeing Moose walking away from the house while he's driving his kid to school or something. And considering it's a very secluded area, your obsessed stalker person is in your general neighborhood, there's reason to believe that he's been in or around your house. So Hunter is like, I don't wanna see you anywhere near my home again. Again, very reasonable behavior. I'm, I think you want me to think of him as the bad guy here and I, I won't, you won't gaslight me into that. That's not gonna happen here. Hunter calls him a stalker and that sends Moose on a rampage. He's like, I am not a stalker. So now he goes home and he's like officially anti- Hunter Dunbar, he's like, he's having a breakdown. He's watching all of his movies and berating him for being mean and shitty and making terrible movies and that he treats his fans so badly. He burns all his stuff that he had gotten as collector's items in regards to his movies, including that jacket that he couldn't afford. And eventually Leah ends up coming to Moose's house and she's like, I saw this photo of you kissing Hunter Dunbar's forehead while he's passed out asleep. You're doing criminal shit, stop. And Moose is like, you're a bad friend. And he like blocks her on all social media and like pushes her. He like physically pushes her at the end at some point. And that's like the end of their friendship apparently. And then the next scene, we see Hunter waking up from slumber and he is tied to a bed with tissue in his mouth and he wakes up, spits the tissue out and he starts to freak out because of course, (laughs) like why wouldn't you? And he looks over and he sees Moose is like seemingly dead on the floor from assumed self-inflicted wound. Apparently no, he's just playing around and Moose wakes up and he decides to have a moment where he plays out random scenes from various movies. Apparently him on the floor was a part of a movie. You went jigsaw Game over. He comes in with a fake knife and goes fake stabbing at him, which I'm not gonna lie, parts of the scene was kind of funny. And then also he brings a gasoline canister and starts pouring it all over him, but it's just water. Hunter is like, what the f- is wrong with you? Moose is like, why are you like so mean to me? Like, why are you so angry all the time? This scene is kind of long and drawn out. It's actually like 20 minutes of this hour and a half movie, but basically long story short, through a series of like compassion and apologies and pleading for him to untie him and, and calling him like a true fan, you know, just to get free, swearing that he won't call the police, swearing he'll sign whatever he wants, swearing that he understands that he's scared and misunderstood and stuff like that. Eventually he convinces 
Moose to let his guard down, feel like they're friends. The hunter punches him in the face and unties himself. He gets his double barrel shotgun out, shoots Moose's hand off, like all of his fingers on one hand off. And then at some point, uh, you can tell that Hunter has turned into a bit more of a sadist, I guess, to some degree. And he's like kind of stalking Moose. And at some point he ends up stabbing him in the eye. And that's when apparently, uh, Hunter is like, I think I've gone too far. He ends up getting a towel or a shirt or something and wraps his wound in that and just kind of shuffles him out of the house. He doesn't call the police again. <laughs> but Moose is able to go. He He's crying and in pain and stuff and he's able to go back home. And on his walk home, he sees Leah again and they kind of make up for all intents and purposes. And somewhere around this time, I was like, whatever happened to the maid? <laughs> Did they ever do anything with the maid? Good on them, they circled back to that. I think they forgot. And the way that they decided to end this movie, which made me so fucking mad, they made it so that the gardener thinks that Hunter killed the maid and Hunter gets arrested for killing the maid and Moose is free. And sure, he lost some fingers and an eye. He killed a woman, broke and enter, stalked somebody, kidnapped them, but he's like off scot-free and Leah's his like kind of guardian angel is how they kind of liken the movie. And that's the end, by the way. I am not a stalker! I hated this movie because one you're trying to gaslight me into thinking that the guy who's getting stalked is the greater evil here and that moose though was an active stalker and a murderer <laughs> well accidental death but he killed somebody after breaking into their house is absolved of all criticism and scrutiny is this the way you want to write this story like it was just it's very offensive <laughs> Like I get the vibe that this movie was trying to make a conversation piece, but did a bad job of it. Who's the greater evil? Or are they both just scared and misunderstood? Like, no, Moose sucks. They're not similar evils. Moose is a stalker who broke into his house. <laughs> like, what are you talking? And killed the maid. I'm hot. <laughs> I am heated. This movie sucks dick, dog. <laughs> Let's turn this damn video off, I'm mad. Anyway, uh, if you've ever seen this movie, I would love to know your thoughts on it. Or if after listening to my rant about this movie, I'm curious, like what are your thoughts? That's all for today, folks. Uh, if you liked today's video, feel free to like today's video. Follow me on all my social media, Instagram and Twitter, both of which are KennyJD. If you'd like to recommend more movies, feel free to put that down in the comment section or over on Twitter. Um, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.